So today we're gonna learn how to paint bushes and foliages from Pseudo Ghibli. And the first step is to learn from the source. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab ourselves some reference photo from the movie itself. This whole thing might look intimidating, but if we break it out into smaller sections, it will be a lot easier to handle. So let's just pick an area that we would like to focus on. If we just crop out this area, let's say, and let's look at these two bushes. The second step is to break these bushes and foliages into value, light, and dark section. Now, if you ignore all the purple flower, these bushes actually look pretty simple, right? Both of them has like an overish shape. And the one on the right here in the shadow is only divided into two sections, like a mid-tone shadow and the shadow shadow. Now the bush on the left is pretty much the same thing except for a little bit highlight on the top right because we have our light source coming from the top right here. So this bush can kind of divide it into three sections instead of two, but the gist of it is pretty much the same. So you have this kind of dark green section here. The shadow is down here. And then you have some highlight from the top. Okay, let's just move a little bit downward here where there's a little bit more action going on. And we're gonna do the same thing. Um, again, if we ignore all the leaf and the little details, we can see that the light section is kind of in the bottom here. And then the darker section is above you. And together they kind of form this oval cloud is shaped like this. Now if you find it hard to identify the light and dark area, especially like this section there over here where there's a lot of little leaf, a lot of details, and a lot of action. The trick that I usually do is that first I swap into black and white. Immediately you can kind of tell a lot easier where the light and the dark area is because we take color out of the picture so now our eyes just looking at values and it's a lot easier to recognize which value is lighter and which value is darker. And if this is still a little too ambiguous, what we can do is that we can go to the contrast and then we increase it all the way to max. So now we can pretty easily see that for the section on the lower right here, the light area can kind of be grouped like this. Ignore that tree branch. So that one big one and then a smaller one down here. And I will group the rest of them into a shadow section. The same thing on the middle section here. I'm just going to group everything on the left hand side here into the lighter group. And then everything on the right hand side be the darker group. Now step three is to learn their individual plans and fully stroke. Now let's get back to our original picture and let's zoom in in this area. It looked pretty complicated, but if we analyze them, we can see that it's just a lot of the same brush stroke repeat over the place, right? So for example, in this area, you can see that the artist put in tiny grass blade stroke. Just kind of all over the place like that. So that one stroke that we're going to put in our mental library, it's just going to be this skinny grass blade looking from different direction. Right? Something like that. Now let's look at this section over here. We can see that the stroke is kind of like this little plant just kind of sprouting out from the bottom. It, you're just adding two leaves on each side and then you make them smaller as you go up, right? So that's another thing that we're gonna add into our library. So let's put them over here. The leaf at the bottom is bigger and then it gets smaller as you go to the top, something like that. Okay, now let's pick another area, let's say this one. The brush stroke here is even easier. It's just a bunch of little light grouping together. So we have a couple one here, a couple one here, a couple one here. Pretty simple. So let's add that into our mental library as well. Do that. Okay, what about this mess over here? Well, it's kind of pretty much the same thing that we already have. If we look closely, we can see that the top here, there's some grass blade stroke, right? And then in the middle here, there's some of those kind of plants that we had before. And then the rest of this is just individual leaf stroke, as you can see. So there's like a leaf stroke here, 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 here. And it's kind of random over the place. There's not really like any plant structure in there. The only thing that we can add is probably this little guy here. 
It looks very similar to our two leaves plant that we had before, but the only difference is that the leaf is slightly skinnier. The leaf in this little plant is kind of like a lady, very sharp and skinny. So if we're going to do it ourselves, it look kind of like this. You have some skinny leaves, kind of go up here. And then try to have them overlap each other. And then again, getting smaller as you go to the top. Something like that. And I want you to repeat this particular step for as many references as you can. Find as many different plant brush strokes as you can. It will help us a lot in our painting process. Another trick we can do to speed up this process, if you just go on Google and you look for Studio Ghibli, Digital Brushes. And we'll go to Images. You can see that there are a lot of people who already kind of broke down this for us. So we can also learn from this and add them to our mental library. Keep in mind, this is a learning purposes. Don't go and just copy all of this and then make it your own and resell it. That's, don't do that. So after we have those planned brushstroke, you can see that all that's left to do is to add a bunch of the brushstroke in this section. For the light section, you want to make those strokes slightly darker like this little plan. And for the dark area, you want to make those strokes using a lighter color. So like this plan down here. Can I move this? And that's pretty much it. One thing to note whenever you do this plan stroke study is to only focus on the silhouette of the plan. For me personally, when I do this exercise, I only use one color marker. And with that, I don't care about values, I don't care about colors, all I care about is the shape of the plants. Okay, now we're gonna take all the things that we just learned and then we're gonna apply that into our painting. Okay, so let's start with something simple. I'm first gonna create just two sections, a light area and a dark area. And for that, I'm mixing some white with yellow and a little bit blue. Try to get this kind of light green going. And then I'm gonna put that down, kind of like a oval shape-ish. Different, different oval section connecting to each other. Simple like that. Now we're going to mix a darker green color. I'm mixing ultramarine blue with some primary yellow. And then I'm using this color for the shadow section. All right, and now we're just adding some of those brushstrokes that we talked about before. And for this, we're just doing some straight up brushstrokes. So I'm just gonna go in each of this area and just add some grass blade. Making them not the same blend, some of them point to the left, some of them point to the right. Adding a little bit of white and yellow into here just to change the hue of the color slightly. It still needs to be darker than the highlight area, but I'm just adding a little bit different color to make it more interesting. I'm 
I'm making it even lighter as I move more toward the highlight area. Now I'm going to go back to the light mixture here, grab some more colors, and we're going to use this color to add some more grass stroke. When you get into the dark area, try not to add too many of the light, um, of the light grass stroke because we still want this area to be in the shadow. Just you know, adding one or two here to create some contrast. If you want to get fancy, you mixing, you can uh, adding a little bit of a different shade of green. So I'm adding a little bit more blue and a little bit more primary yellow. And using this to just creating the same brush stroke, kind of in the middle of this section, the live section. Making things look slightly more interesting. And that's our first potion. Pretty simple, right? Okay, now let's try to get something a little bit more complicated. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start out by blocking in the light and the dark area. So for the light area, I'm adding lemon yellow, some tallow blue, and white. When you paint this in like a bigger uh, painting, you make you want to make sure that the light and the shadow is cohesive with the rest of the painting. But since we're just painting like one bush, it doesn't really matter where we put light in the dark area. So for this, I'm going to make it a little bit more of a bush shape. This is more like a grass area. I'm going to make this more looking more like a bush. So it's a little bit more round. And then for the dark area here. I'm gonna make the area at the bottom a little bit darker, like a bush. It's gonna create a cast shadow on the ground. So I wanna make that bottom area slightly darker. Uh, 
All right, so now we're gonna add a couple of different strokes, not just the straight up grass blade. We're gonna add some round leaf-ish stroke um, where the transition between the shadow and the highlight is. And we're adding that into the drop drop shadow down here too. Add some of them around the silhouette of the bush. Okay, now we're going to grab this dark color and we're going to do the same thing. I'm doing this within the transition between the two values. Okay, and now we're doing the same thing with the lighter colors. So for the top part of the silhouette, I'm just gonna add some, you know, grass play going up just like what we did for the the other bush. As this moves toward the side, this grass blade is going to droop down a little bit more instead of just straight up like the one at the top here. And now we're doing that same thing for um, the transition between the light, the very high light and the kind of darker mid-tone here. Adding some very skinny uh, grass blade ish. Okay, we're going to make it a slightly darker color. It's going to be between this highlight area and the dark mid-tone. So for that, I'm just adding a little bit more blue. And I'm going to use this color for the middle part here. Again, adding just some straight up grass blade and then some round leaf poking in and out.
And that our second bush. If we're feeling fancy, we can add a little bit of uh, flowers on top of these. So let's grab some yellow. And want to add a little bit white. And here we go. Now I want to show you that you don't even need this little detail for your bush to look good. So for this, let's watch it up. Let's do the dark area first. So I'm just going to add some blue. Adding in a little bit of yellow to create a green shade. Okay, and then let's create a bushes. Um, it's going to look a little bit round like this but we're gonna make the silhouette a little bit more interesting with slightly more curve and more irregularity Right, now let's get a lighter color and I'm gonna weave in the light area kind of like still on the top right of the bush but I'm gonna weave that in a little bit more in between this dark area and the on the edges I'm gonna make them look kind of like a cauliflower it's kind of similar to painting clouds just imagining you adding the highlight uh, on the cloud We're not adding any detail or plan leaves or shrub, we're just making these um, light and dark area kind of weaving in and out of each other a little bit more. I'm expanding this bush a little bit to the right more. Again, breaking up the solid here a little bit, make things look more cauliflower like. And then, yeah, it's already looking pretty good, right? To spice up a little bit, just making a even lighter color. So I'm just adding white to this mixture that I have right here. So yellow, so blue, and it's that a little bit of that cauliflower so I highlight on um, some top of the part here. We're still just depicting light and uh, dark area. We're not really adding any, you know, leaves like looking shock.
Then this our highlight, we don't want to cover everything with it. So just a couple, sure, a couple sections here and there is enough. bushes okay now for this area let's try to combine all of this into kind of one a little bit of bigger and more complicated um section we going to use the same principle as in let's do the dark and the light area first no details at this stage so let's do the drop first in the middle here I'm gonna add like this kind of simple bush, like maybe two of them up here. So I'm going to add in a lighter area, but it's still going to be in the shadow. So we have two dark areas, but this one going to be my darkest. I'm getting also a dark area, but just light lighter than that. Now for the lighter section. Adding a lighter part, just like what we did here, unlike some of the top part on this side. Again, since this is um, kind of like a highlight-ish, we don't want to add too much of those. Just a couple of sections here and there is enough.
right? Okay, now I'm gonna fill this white area here with a lighter green uh, for the light part of the bottom section. And we're filling this in, this color. Now I'm running out colors at a little bit more. And we're going to use this to now adding some strokes that are kind of like straight up like the one we did here. And then some little bit more leaf plants like like the one we did here. So here I'm just gonna start out with just adding the straight grass play. It's all the easiest. And as you notice so far, I've only been using one brush. You can create a lot with just a round brush. You don't need like fancy brushes to you know create different strokes. Okay, I think that's good enough. There's a lot of them now. Let's use pretty much the same color maybe adding a little bit more blue making it slightly different and i'm going to use this color to create some of the plant looking like shrub like we did here Adding different type of plan, not just add the same one, you know, make them look more interesting, create a little bit more variety. This is a time where you just take the sheet that you have, that you did before, like I kind of have it right here. So I was looking at my reference on uh, which plan that I think would suit best and just using that to kind of add it in this section. And this is why when we do the land stroke, we only do the silhouette. Because right here, I'm not adding, you know, you, you don't see like stem, you don't see different color on this plant. It's only just the plant silhouette that matters.
I'm now adding some of that down here too. Kind of pretty much anywhere there's a transition between light and dark. Varying, sometimes I'm adding like this right now, I'm adding really big ish, roundish stroke. Whereas up here, they're kind of like skinny and a little bit more um, plant like. Like kind of grassish like too. The more variety you have, the more interesting your bushes and plant would look. Alright, now we're going to grab a dark color and we're going to do the same thing into the lighter area. And just like what we did before, I'm going to start out with just adding some grass clay. Those are the simplest ones. I'm going to lighten this up slightly. We're focusing on the transition between the dark and the light area. That's where you see the most contrast when you add these kind of leaf-like looking stroke. And the nice thing about this is that you don't even need reference. You already have your library, so you don't need like a actual scene from the movie that you have to paint exactly like. You can kind of improvise and make it look however you want. Okay, now let's also go in and add some plant light looking. Just like we did up here, we're going to do that down here between the transition between this dark color and the light area.
and just like we did for the light area you make sure you want to kind of varying the shape and the size of the plant that you're adding don't make them all look the same make them different more interesting All right, right now we could pretty much stop and done, but just, you know, go the extra mile, adding some flowers. And we're going to use this to add some reddish flower. I'm not going to add too many flowers of this color because red is the complementary color of green. So it would really pop out when you add this. So we don't want to add too much of it. This is made glass. Like that. And we are done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you like more videos like this in the future. Other than that, I'll see you all next time.